Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and uh, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, some discussions and some suggestions that you all have made uh, for GGG over the next year. We asked the hypothetical question, uh, hey, if GGG emailed you and said, what's one thing that you would want to see changed or added in PoE over the next year, what would you say? We're going to get to some of your responses. Some of them are great and some of them are hilarious. Some of them are off the wall. Some of them are things I'd never thought about before. So we're going to get to those, some of those in just a minute. But I really quickly wanted to address something celebratory and special. Uh, we're 10 days away from our sixth anniversary right here at G3. Uh, August 23rd was when our channel launched uh, and everything went live uh, for Good Guy Gaming as a consulting business, as a digital community for League of Legends and for World of Warcraft, for Hearthstone, for Rocket League, for a whole bunch of different things that we've started and uh, been a part of over the last six years. So there's lots of amazing memories to think about lots of amazing people to think about but uh, some special things that we're going to do one is that we're our shipment finally came in with all of our uh, patreon swag uh, for giveaways so we're going to be doing those giveaways here in the upcoming days as well as we're going to do uh, an AMA so if you've got general questions about gaming communities games uh, Path of Exile in particular LOL or other esports or group management, interpersonal management, or just life in general, feel free to drop a comment. You can do that either over on our Patreon page or on our YouTube comment section, and then we'll aggregate those, and then on our sixth anniversary, uh, we'll do a, uh, a short discussion on that. I haven't decided yet whether that's going to be a live-streamed event or a video, um, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So drop a comment if you've got a question that you wanted addressed that hasn't been addressed somewhere else. Okay, so that being said, on to today's discussion. So imagine if GGG emailed you, let's say you woke up or right before you clicked on this video, you got an email from Chris Wilson at Grinding Gear that said, hey, what's one thing you want to see changed or added to POE over the next year? What would you say back? What would you reply with? And there are a bunch of responses here. So we're going to do our best to get to every single one of them. So Gassan said, make uh, when a focused skill is used more playable. So focus skills right now in PoE, they're there, but nobody has really figured out, to my knowledge, nobody has really figured out a way to maximize focus skills. And that seems to be something that's a bit of a problem. There's, there's a little bit of the um, mechanism behind focus that seems to be, you need to be able to trigger it first off, right? So there's kind of a sequential problem. First, you need to be able to trigger focus. And then secondly, once you're focused, you need to really be able to take advantage of being focused. It reminds me a little bit um, back when Vol skills were uh, prior to their rework, how awkward they were um, and how unintuitive they were, how a lot of the times you had to jam two different, you know, gem setups. You had to have your main skill set up and then plus a, a vol version of that same skill set up. It's just a little awkward and that's kind of where focus is right now. It's just a little awkward. If you build an entire build around it, it's not going to feel as good as doing another build that necessarily wouldn't focus on it. Yes, it will feel great when you are focused, but when you're not focused, it will feel really, really bad. And so that's kind of that we're living in a little bit of that tension there. Dezo says, remove half of item bases from the game and rescale all core loot drops in the core game. So a simple rescaling of loot drops. We know that this is something that's on GGG's radar that they'd like to do. Part of the problem is that if you simply rescale everything and uh, tune rewards up, this is going to be a repeated theme throughout this entire conversation today. But part of the problem is, is if you retune everything and just make everything that drops better, but make the number of things drop less, what that does is it means for players who are newer to the game, who are learning exactly what's good and what's not, they just have a smaller pool of things to actually uh, look from and observe from. And that never feels good, right? It never feels good to go in and kill something and just have nothing show up. Imagine if you're a new player and it's your first time playing a boss or it's your first time doing a particular encounter and just nothing drops for you or relatively few things drop for you. It feels bad. Those of us that have been playing for a long time and, and use relatively high scale filters, especially at this point in the league, I would imagine most of us, if you're still playing Legion League or using some pretty strict filter settings, it feels really bad when you kill something and next to nothing drops. That, that feels pretty bad. So this is something that is on GGG's radar. They're trying to take a look at it. My um, feedback for you on that one, Option Dizzo, is that it's probably coming in 4.0 just because it seems like it's too big of a, ta of a task to tackle prior to 4.0. 
Okay, Keith Kahn says flashy stab, uh, flashy stash tab to mix drinks like a bartender for different bonuses. The tab will have a mixer that lets you mix any flask together to give a hybrid effect or possibly an effect that is not known in existence. That is an amazing, amazing suggestion. I love it. I think it's cool. I think that would be awesome. It would essentially be, you know, you're your own bartender. You're your own bar maker. You can mix together things like it's Ziri's Promise plus maybe the, um, oh, I don't know, maybe like the Witchfire Brew. Or you could mix together something like Lion's Roar with Wise Oak, right? And then all of a sudden you've got this new, this new item. Crafting with flasks and crafting with unique flasks to combine them, I think that would be a really, really cool phenomenon. It, of course, would be incredibly convoluted as soon as we say that. Like, the number of unique flasks that are in the game are ridiculous. And so as soon as you say, hey, let's start combining these mixtures, I think it would be really, really cool. Maybe that's like an, an ascendancy's choice that you can use or, or where you get like an additional, I don't know, maybe that's a Pathfinder rework where you get like an additional... Uh, socket as it were for an extra flask I don't know something like that it it seems like it would be really really big and really really complex when you think about all of the different possible combinations that are in existence it's it, it's really mind-blowing like when you think about the uh, uh, reward jewels that are coming from Legion and all of the different possible combinations that exist on the passive tree right now that are available for that. When you think about synthesized crafting and you think about how many different implicits that were possible to be created when you were synthesized crafting, I think something like a, fla a, 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 a flask stash tab where you mix together different drinks, I think it would be cool. I think the sheer number of possibilities make it like just mind-blowing um so i think it would be really really cool i don't know what the feasibility of that is but i think that was a great suggestion sean ramirez says next level of super uber lab where we get better control over the enchant we get i think that would be cool i have been on record and said before i think that the lab is probably getting reworked in 4.0 i don't think it's coming before that but i think that would be really really cool and it would be in line with some of the design choices that we're seeing ggg do which is adding more and more ascendancy nodes to each ascendancy we haven't seen them really release a new ascendancy or any hints that there will be new ascendancies that are coming out but we have seen them add massive keynotes onto uh, pre-existing ascendancies as they're reworking them. So I think that would be really cool to have a fifth ascendancy for, for you know, a fifth, sorry, not ascendancy, but a fifth trial and a fifth lab to run through. Who knows what that would look like? Who knows if that would be gated beyond even more RNG or what that would look like? How would you incorporate that in with the lore to say, hey, here's the lab and nobody's ever found this other fifth lab before? I guess you could just do it that way. Uh, but I think it would be cool to have additional layers of the lab. I think the lab was almost GGG's first interpretation, or maybe not their first, feel free to correct me down below, but I feel like it was one of their first iterations of what we now have as Delve, which is repeatable content that essentially resets at different periods of time. It's got a boss that's predictable, and then it's always rewarding, right? There is a cost to it, but it's always rewarding. That cost is limited, of course, it's it's the fragments, right? Whereas in Delve, the, the limits are your Delve juice, your sulfite capacity. But I, I think that that would be a really, really cool thing to do. I think now that they've learned all of the things that they've learned about bestiary, about incursion, about delve, I think they're going to go back and look at the lab and see how the lessons they've learned there can maybe update the lab. Um, then again, this is GGG, so it could be that we get to 4.0 and the lab's not touched. It, it's possible. It's possible. So I think it's a great suggestion, Sean. Waku Jitsu says to bring Synthesis back into the game in all of its glory. I'm right there with you. I wish Synthesis was back. That being said, the fact that Synthesis isn't back, I'm a whole lot richer for all of the stuff that I get to sell in Standard that I did synthesize. So it's like, hey, if it comes back, I'm a lot poorer. If it doesn't come back, I'm richer. But if it does come back, then we can all synthesize stuff again, which is a lot more fun. So there's there's lots of different uh, plus and minuses to synthesis. I'm sure a, I'm sure a number of you that are watching this are going to say, never bring Cavus or synthesis back. Just get rid of it. Keep it out of the game. JBid says a clear all inventory button. I think that would be great. It would it would save my wrist so much. Like I've actually went out and purchased uh, a a left handed mouse. Like this is my left hand. And I've purchased a left-handed mouse because of all of the work that my right-handed mouse gets during peak PoE season. Um, it, it is a thing. Carpal tunnel is a thing. It would be really nice if we could just be like, hey, dump all this into a tab. That would be insanely, insanely nice for, for 
just for quality of life. My goodness, on my wrists and on my fingers. That would be so nice. Uh, Kale says, more MTX. Andres says, I want in late game some skills that can be more powerful when we consume currencies of different currency types and that have a different effect. I think this is kind of an interesting concept. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by this, Andres, so I'm just going to run with what you said. It would be interesting if we essentially had something that was like a vol skill that had a cost to it, but the cost wasn't just, uh, let's say, monsters. Let's say the cost was actually currency. So that way, as you dumped, literally, physically dumped currency, another sink for your currency, into your item, then your item or your skill would actually do another effect. I think that would be cool. That being said, it gets kind of into the area of... Um, almost like item resistance or item durability. And GGG has said in the past that they don't want to interact with that, that they don't want to mess with that. Um, it could be that it's something that comes with 4.0 just because we have so little details on 4.0, but uh, I, I think it, it borders on a line of development that would say, oh, this item is no longer worth it if it's got X amount of currency dumped into it. Um, and so then you, you get this really, really awesome piece of gear that you no longer want to upgrade, which is bad from GGG's perspective. GGG always wants us to be hunting and looking for upgrades. And so if you get like a best in slot thing that you're always dumping your currency into, now this essentially acts as too much of a dump where you don't have currency to purchase upgrades and the currency that you're spending through the, the weapon or the skill that you've got isn't necessarily rewarding with rewarding you enough. Like it it could be something that could be tweaked and could be interesting, um, but it could also just be a terrible, terrible currency sink that actually just loses loses everybody and makes everybody bummed out to be playing. Jun K says, for all doors to be removed or auto open like incursions, yes, those of you that play PoE, if you ever run into a door, whether you're in face-to-face -face life, <laughs> Or if you're in PoE, if you ever just walk into a door and you're shocked it doesn't open, I do that on my characters all the time. Almost every new league, once I interact with Alva and I run a couple temples, I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Why why, why are these doors not opening? This is obnoxious. So yeah, that would be kind of nice if we lived in a Star Trek universe and everything just opened for us. Bruno says, for Delve to actually be alternative to maps, maybe rooms that give sulfite inside Delve. Yes, I think that would be great, Bruno. The unfortunate news, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, GGG's not going to let it happen. They're just not. Delve, Delve, at least as of right now, is, is according to all of the design principles that GGG has stated, they're never going to let it happen. That being said, if they emailed you and said, hey, what's one change, and Bruno, you emailed this, this back to them and they had to follow through with it, that would be amazing. Bruno, your name would go down in history as uh, as a hero in poe lore because everybody would be like yay we can delve whenever we want to and it's an alternative to, to playing maps and playing the whole game a lot of people would really love that damon black says lower mtx pri prices i doubt it will ever happen but i've always thought ggg charges a bit much for a vast majority of things in the shop yes i i'm right there with you um on the one hand that some things in the shop look just utterly ridiculous in terms of their price point um but at the same time since everything in PoE is, uh, is, is free to play and everything's optional, everything's cosmetic of what you can purchase beyond stash tabs, which are very pragmatic. Besides for those stash tabs, everything is just, it, it really is just flair. And so if you want your character to be decked out and look a certain way and have a certain flair, uh, literally in face-to-face in, in -face life, if we want to buy a certain pair of clothes that look very, very nice, those are more expensive than other clothes that don't look as nice, right? Um, demand and perception are a big thing uh, in, in arts and in artistic representations of ourselves, regardless if we're talking in digital worlds or if we're talking in face-to-face -face life. So yes, it's 30 bucks for a weapon effect, but... That's because it's 30 bucks for a weapon effect. I mean, that's that's what it is. That's the price point that GGG has set. Uh, so I'm with you that it feels like it's a lot. That being said, it's a free-to-play game. You don't have to spend your money on it. Okay, Lance Murray uh, is responding with a whole bunch of different things. We're just going to get to one of them. Lance says, an auction house with a buyout for maps and currency items. Of course, this was going to come up as a topic. And of course, GGG has written a trade manifesto on it. We've done several different discussion topics on it. That being said, if they had to respond to your email that said, yes, we're going to have an auction house, I think most likely the one that would happen would be simply a straight auction house for conversion of maps and for conversion of currency. I think those two things are probably the most likely out of anything that would happen. 
uh, if there ever was an auction house to be implemented. Nicholas Parrish says, add some ascendancy nodes on the Necromancer and Guardian for SRS and Animate Guardian, plus one or two uniques for mine skills that are as good as Tinker Skin is for traps. Nicholas, you mentioned Necromancer and SRS, so you've got my vote and my thumbs up. I'm totally with you on that. I, I really hope that 3.8 is the Necro Ascendancy rework and that it's the patch where we all get to go back to, to playing summoners. Regardless if it is or not, I might just go play an SRS Necro. I almost fired up PoE and just started a, a, a solo cell phone hardcore character as a Necro the other day. I almost did it. And then I was like, no, 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 patience, patience. Your time is coming. Your time is coming. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for that to happen as well, buddy. Hopefully it happens soon. Loopmaster1337 says, add an option to move the UI icons around. I'd love to move the debuffs, the map, and tweak the HP bar. I think this is a great suggestion. It would be awesome to be able to just like snap and drop and drag uh, all sorts of stuff on the UI. That being said, I have no idea what the, the difficulty of that is and what the scale of that would require in the work on GGG side. I just think it would be an awesome idea. Some of us like to look at things differently than others. I am not uh, a colorblind individual. That being said, on most games that have a colorblind option, I play the game with a colorblind option. That's simply one example of saying uh, when there's ways to tweak UI and ways to tweak and personalize UI to my liking, I generally try to take advantage of it. I've got a good friend right here in G3 that I've known since 2013, uh, and he simply won't play a game if you cannot set the game up to play with a controller. If you can't mess around and customize the controls in a game, you just lost him because he wants to customize everything. Uh, to the way that, that, that feels good for him as he's playing. So I'm totally with you on that. That would be awesome if we can move the UI around. Red says, number one, balance to balance and not to hype. Red, I agree with you. Um, that being said, this is where I agree with you and this is where I disagree. Yes, balance to balance is great and it sounds great in theory. Balancing to balance means that you're going to have to create a hierarchy at some point to say this is, these are going to be end game options, these are going to be mid game options, these are going to be early game options. We have some of that right now, but right now what the balance around a hype train allows a company to do, and Red, I'm sure you know this, but it allows a company to simply say, hey, we're going to rotate different stuff out, we're going to move our business model around, uh, around a new skill that's coming out. GGG, at least to my knowledge, doesn't do this in any kind of unethical way. It's not as though they release a bunch of MTX and then go out and, and just absolutely nerf something. Uh, other companies do that. Uh, I haven't seen that in my in my own observations of GGG where they'll they'll go and release a bunch of stuff that you can purchase for a skill and then nerf it to the ground. What I do see GGG doing is balancing things, yes, to create hype, and then they let that hype last for usually two to four leagues, and then they'll rotate it out. That being said, uh, I do see this as a trend across the board in games uh, in general, in multiplayer online games in general, where balance is right now pretty much about building hype. It's not really about creating balance or creating parity. Uh, it is mostly about creating hype. So yeah, I'm in agreement with you. You've got to you've got to balance to balance. I like games that feel balanced. Uh, I I'm an avid chess player. I've played chess since I was a kid. I love playing chess. That is that is a game where it is the epitome of balance, right? That you almost don't get more balanced than chess, right? Somebody's got to go first, granted. But other than that, it's pretty well balanced. Uh, whereas games today in multiplayer settings, whether it's a card game like Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering Online or Gwent, whether it is a online, you know, action RPG, whether it is uh, a massive esport like a MOBA like League of Legends, whether or not it is something like even something as similarly balanced as Rocket League, where different cars can sometimes give you different hitboxes. Like a lot of the time, balance right now is a way to generate hype amongst the more competitive part of your game's community. And so that's one of the reasons why companies do it. I don't necessarily like it, but I can understand why companies do it. Nisterior, saw, uh, Nisterior says, first thought, trade. There you go. He just leaves it there, trade. He would like trade to be revamped. I think that trade... Overall, if we're not just talking about an auction house, I think the trade probably is going to see some interactions in 4.0. I don't think we're going to see an auction house ever in PoE, at least as long as Chris Wilson is involved in the game. But I do think we are going to see maybe some updates and maybe some changes to the way that trade uh, interacts. Um, so that way we can hopefully hopefully trade in some areas where we haven't been able to trade necessarily before. Like Delve is still incredibly buggy for trading and for inviting people into your hideout or to your delve mines for trading. 
Um, the lab is still really, really inconvenient. If you're a lab runner and you're running the lab, you've got to tell people to wait uh, just a few minutes for you to be done with the lab. Like there's still a couple of areas where trade can be improved that doesn't have to do with the auction house. And I think GGG will address that in 4.0. Zachariah says, make Winter Orb great again. Need the damage and scaling, but let me run around and be lazy again. I'm right there with you. I played I played Winter Orb during flashback just to see what it was all like. And uh yeah, it was it was pretty nuts. I think it was I think the numbers were I'm not gonna check them right now, but I think it was 40% of flashback was playing Winter Orb. It was it was ridiculous. Okay, Kazieshi says 32 tiers of maps divided into four regular maps, one unique map, one boss fight per tier. Do the four regular maps to be able to fight the boss. Once you kill the boss, the next tier unlocks. Difficulty at tiers 1 through 16 and a new tiered system is just the same as the current system, meaning tiers 17 through 32 would continue to scale into a much more challenging content. So Kazeshi is essentially saying, hey, let's extend the mapping system and let's make it more difficult and more rewarding the deeper we play the game. Fritzky says, I need to know the math on my one-shot combat log. F it, make it a league, combat log league, and I would be excited. Probably take time off work too. So I'm right there with you. I think a combat log would be great. I think that uh, we've, we've dedicated an entire discussion to this in a video before that uh, there are ways to try to learn about how you died. Uh, but the reality is, is that at the moment, there's simply no succinct way that the game informs you why and how you died. I think that that would be um, incredibly handy for a lot of players. Some players have made the suggestion, why not simply give us that tool and then allow players to turn it on or turn it off as a player option? And I think the reason why GGG wouldn't do that is because at that point, players are going to start data mining all of the various numbers on uh, monsters and all of the various resistances, HP points, damages, right? We, we've got an incredibly dedicated community of players right here in, in PoE. I've, I've just got to say this about all of us, not, not me specifically, not even us here locally in G3, but I'm saying across the board in PoE, we've got an incredibly dedicated community of players that will go out, build tools, build wikis, build databases of all kinds of stats on everything. I mean, we've got players like Slippery Jim that run thousands and thousands of map to, to try to give us some point of consistency on drop rates. You've got other players like Grimro that tries to, to narrow down the market efficiency of exactly what is the breakpoint of doing something for profitability. You've got other players like Mathel that try to take things that are specifically not popular and then show you ways how to make it uh, uh, efficient and effective. We've got other players like like the list. The list goes on and on. Uh, and those are just those are just content creators. That's that's not even players behind things like Mercury Trade or things like Poe Affix or Poe DB or all the different people that contribute to making the wiki updated and on top of things. Like we've got an incredibly dedicated player base, right? We really do. So to say, hey, I want a combat log, and then not admit that there's going to be players that are going to take advantage of that and try to branch out and turn the game into even more database and spreadsheets. I think at that point, if you made it a player agency thing and said, yeah, but you can just turn the combat log off, you would actually feel like you're not playing the same game anymore, A, and B, you would also feel like you're playing at a disadvantage when we're talking about the competitive racing scene as well as the competitive market scene. So that, that's two ways that I think a combat log would seriously, seriously mess with the fundamentals of the way that PoE is played with right now. Um, similarly, actually, to an auction house. I don't necessarily think it would be bad, but I think it would change the way how we play the game right now. A true Scotsman says trade and server fixes. Server fixes are, are always needed, and I'm always going to be behind that. There's still large portions of servers uh, throughout the course, the lifetime of a league that simply have outages or disruptions of service. So that's that's always something that companies can improve on. And I think GGG does their best to try to stay on top of that, including, not excluding, but including launch weekends. Whenever there are problems, they get a patch out just like that uh, and get all of us back into queue and, uh, and away we go again. And it's great. Jonathan says, a scarab-like drop for each league mechanic that drops in maps somewhat commonly. So you're allowed to focus on the content that you need without feeling bad by getting content you're not interested in. So this is essentially a legacy league with uh, League Stones. I think it's great. League Stones were great. League Stones essentially were that. They essentially were a scarab that you could input into a map device and then alter the map. So you could include a Breach on it. You could include an Abyss on it. You could include a Harbinger on it. You could include extra Tormented Spirits on it. You could include Beasts on it, etc. And it was a really, really cool system. It left us with a whole bunch of stuff and a whole bunch of people complaining because as you were collecting your League Stones, there wasn't a, a specific tab for it. 
So people just had tabs and tabs. Imagine how bad it was for fossils, for Dell fossils, and, and prior to them being stackable. League stones were not stackable. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there. I, I don't believe they were stackable. I don't remember them being stackable. And on top of that, uh, they took up a one by one square. So you essentially just had, and they dropped like candy. I mean, they dropped way more than maps did, um, which was great because then you could target farm what you wanted to do in each map. But it also meant the market was just flooded with them and a bunch of people had tabs and tabs full of these things so i think i think it would be cool if we had that drop rates and acquisition rates would have to be figured out biff kelly says uh stance change key binds so that we don't have to bind the actual blood and sand auras lots of build struggle with key binds and stances uh, have just made things harder so biff i'm gonna take an extension off of that i would i would cc myself on your email i would copy onto that as a ps i would just say hey give us some more key binds or give us an option for key binds um somewhere that we can scroll or add some more key binds i i think that that would be Really, really awesome. Coming from a support player that plays a support build almost once a league, as well as a Necromancer player that we just always need more active buttons, I think it would be great. Mkui says, path of building in client. It's already free and easy to access. Rene says, uh, Rene Ochoa says, hi G3, an easier way to target farm helm enchants. Maybe not by tag or color, but by doing hundreds of lab runs and getting them is a bad system. Totally agree. We've already hit on this uh, previously, but I agree. I think, I think the solution to this is to do some sort of currency mechanism, is to do some sort of thing where you interact with the lab helm enchant altar and you capture the enchant in like a fossil or something, and then that fossil can be used on any base that you'd like. I think that's that's a great solution. It adds currency to the game, which GG loves to add currency. And it also adds still allowing that layer of RNG. You never know what it is that you're going to get. And it also includes another economic uh, part of the system, which it's still profitable to run the lab. It's just it's removing one layer of RNG, but still keeping another layer of it. It's not totally removing the layers of RNG. So I think that that was it was one suggestion that has been made in the past. And I think it would be a great suggestion. The Dom says auction house. Modest says not going to happen, but I want normal mobs to be more of a challenge. Any challenge, really. The default should not be that they just fall over when you come cruising by. Modus, I agree with you. That being said, go play a new character again. At this point in the league, yes, everything dies to us, right? Because we've collected everything there is to collect. We've got our end game builds. We can blow everything up. Go start a new character and tell me in Act 1 that there's not stuff that's, that doesn't scare you. Like, when you're level 4 and you're going to get that medicine chest, and you've got... I'm talking nothing. Do a fresh start. you got nothing on you. There are people that die in, in Hardcore during Race League, right? During the, during the first weekend. There are people that die to Nessa, or die on their way to go get the medicine chest for Nessa. Like, there are people that die in the mud flats uh, as they're walking around trying to find the, the three shells to unlock the underground passage. Like, there are people that die to Dweller of the Deep. Like, I, I just, I just want to say, yes... It's nice to have scaling difficulty and to have things that scale that are difficult. I would say try a fresh start or go try and push your build into Delve because there's, there's white monsters in Delve that'll kill you. You just have to get far enough down. Spencer Stewart says for PS4, I really want an auto sort feature. I love playing the game but hate organizing my bank, especially on console. Totally agree. It would be so awesome if we had a just a simple dump button as well as an organize or smash together uh, button. I've seen other games that have got similar uh, styles of reorganization tools. Uh, one that comes to mind is just Grim Dawn. Grim Dawn's got a really simple, hey, move stuff around in a Tetris way. You just click a button and it moves everything around in your stash uh, around. The technology is there. It's just GGG doesn't want to implement it for whatever reason we don't know. But I think that would be very, very helpful. Big says auction house and save the healer says better drop rates. Thanks so much to everybody for dropping me a comment. Of course, drop a comment down below with your own thoughts and an answer to this question. If GGG were to send you an email, if you woke up today and you got an email that said, hey, what's one thing you want to see changed or added to POE over the next year? What would you say? I look forward to reading your comments down below. And of course, thanks so much for watching. And I hope today is the day a mirror of Calandra drops for you in celebration of our almost six year anniversary right here at G3. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.